I feel like every time there's a story about independent bookstores, it's like, oh, isn't it sad? The independent bookstores are dying. No more of them, you know, just Amazon and chains. And I'm like, that's not the whole story. My partner, Rebecca, and I, we were both committed to the idea that you have to run a bookstore as a business. Like, it's not just a sort of hobby, you know, that you do because you love books. That, that doesn't, I mean, maybe that was possible, like, in the 70s, um, before there were chains in the internet, but at this point, you have to be very aware of the financial side and, and make sure that you are going to be able to make ends meet and make a profit. But at the same time, that didn't conflict philosophically for us with the idea that we're creating a community space. Um, that we're, we're making a neighborhood institution, somewhere that people gather and meet each other and encounter literature and encounter new ideas. Those all seem to go together. In the fall of 2008, there was this like dive in the, the national economy and everybody got scared. And we're like, maybe this takes another 10 years before this happens. And it was heartbreaking. But there was nothing else I'd ever wanted to do this much, you know? There was no other life I could imagine. So we were just gonna, you know, keep trying for as long as it took. I figured somehow I would make it happen. It sounds totally crazy at this point, and yet it worked. It is kind of traditional with a small business to get small loans from family and friends, but we didn't really have that many family and friends who had that much money. So we're like, can we extend this to people in the community who'd be willing to loan us $1,000 at a time? And the response was overwhelming. And we raised about $70,000 through community loans. It was worth it, not only because it helped us get the capital together, but because there are all these people who feel so invested in this store, you know, it's, it's literally, they own a piece of it. The decisions that we feel good about also tend to be good business decisions. We have this big kind of table of local Brooklyn authors and New York authors, and we're emphasizing that a lot in the events that we host. It's not like it's a purely philanthropic decision. I feel like everything we do is like, we're creating this environment that people want to spend time in. You know, you can buy a book anywhere. What we can offer is an experience, like a, a place that you can come in and connect with other people and find out about your neighborhood. Part of why we're doing well is this community that we've kind of like lucked into and how strong a need there was for a bookstore here, how many books people can afford to buy here, and this sort of literary center that already existed that we just made ourselves a part of and people have been completely embracing us. People said that they wanted a bookstore and they were telling the truth. I feel like there's an increasing sense among people who love books that there's a value to an independent bookstore, that there's something you can get there that you can't get from clicking on a button on the internet, and that's great for us. But the story is not that independent bookstores are dying, you know? Independent bookstores are, are evolving and are still a piece of the, the picture.